the heart of Phrygia, nestled amidst rolling hills and fertile valleys, a kingdom flourished under the reign of King Midas. Renowned for his wisdom and generosity, Midas was a beloved ruler, his kingdom prosperous and his people content. But fate, it seems, had a peculiar twist in store for the king, a twist that would transform his life from gilded dreams to a chilling nightmare. One fateful day, while tending to his rose garden, Midas stumbled upon a curious sight, a satyr, half man, half goat, sprawled unconscious amongst the blooms. Recognizing the creature as Silenus, companion to the mighty Dionysus, god of wine and revelry, Midas offered him aid. Grateful for the king's kindness, Dionysus appeared before Midas, offering a reward in return for his hospitality. Blinded by ambition, Midas, without a moment's hesitation, wished for the touch of gold, envisioning a kingdom overflowing with unimaginable wealth. Dionysus, his eyes filled with sadness, granted the wish. A surge of power coursed through Midas, and with trembling fingers, he reached out to a nearby rose bush. To his astonishment, the delicate petals transformed into shimmering gold. The once vibrant flower was now a lifeless metallic ornament. Euphoria surged through Midas. He raced through his palace, transforming everything he touched, furniture, tapestries, even the walls themselves, into a dazzling display of wealth. But as his initial excitement waned, a chilling realization dawned upon him. Desperately thirsty, Midas reached for a drink. But as the cup touched his hand, it turned solid. The cool water now turned into gold. His thirst remained, a constant reminder of the curse he had brought upon himself. He reached for his daughter, her laughter echoing in the opulent hall, only to feel the warmth of her skin turn cold and lifeless under his golden touch. His kingdom, once a haven of life and laughter, became a gilded cage, a monument to his insatiable greed. The very things he cherished, his family, his people, the simple pleasures of life, were now forever out of reach, victims of his own desires. Trapped in a prison of his own making, King Midas, the once beloved ruler, now faced a terrifying truth the Midas touch, a curse far more devastating than anything he could have ever imagined. The curse of Midas, a heavy weight that transformed everything he touched into lifeless gold. Weeks turned into months, the once vibrant kingdom of Phrygia, now a gilded tomb, echoing with a chilling silence. Yet a flicker of hope remained within the king's heart. Driven by love and regret, Midas embarked on a perilous journey, seeking redemption at the source of his misfortune. The once vibrant kingdom of Phrygia lay shrouded in a silence, a gilded tomb echoing with the emptiness of King Midas's folly. Consumed by despair, Midas wandered his opulent prison, the weight of his curse a crushing burden. The touch that once brought him joy now turned everything it grazed into cold, lifeless gold. Driven by a desperate hope, Midas remembered a legend whispered on the wind, a tale of Dionysus, the god of wine and revelry, who had granted his ill-fated wish. With a sliver of hope flickering within him, Midas embarked on a perilous journey to Mount Olympus, the abode of the gods, Days turned into weeks as Midas braved treacherous mountain paths, his heart heavy with regret, and his touch a constant reminder of his devastating mistake. Finally, he reached the summit and knelt before the great Dionysus. Tears streamed down Midas's face as he confessed his deepest regret, his voice echoing through the halls of Olympus. He pleaded for forgiveness, not for the restoration of his wealth, but for the chance to undo the curse that had turned his life into a gilded cage. Dionysus, his eyes filled with a flicker of amusement and then a touch of understanding, spoke. Your greed has indeed brought you hardship, King Midas, he boomed, but redemption is possible. 
Deep within the heart of Anatolia flows the legendary river Pactolus. Its waters possess the power to cleanse even the most potent magic. Hope rekindled in Midas's heart. He followed Dionysus's guidance, the promise of redemption propelling him forward. Finally, after weeks of relentless travel, he stumbled upon the shimmering waters of the Pactolus. With trembling hands, he stripped himself and waded into the cool current. A wave of energy went through Midas, a cleansing power washing away the curse that had bound him. He emerged from the river, renewed and desperate to test his freedom. He reached for a nearby stone, his fingers meeting rough, cool surface. Relief flooded him. The curse was broken. With tears of joy in his eyes, Midas rushed back to his kingdom. He raced towards his daughter. As their fingers intertwined, a soft, golden light emanated from their touch, slowly fading away to reveal her skin, unharmed and radiant. Relief washed over them both, a testament to the power of love and forgiveness. He embraced his daughter, the warmth of her skin, a balm to his soul. Her once brown hair now shone with a bright golden color as a permanent reminder of his folly. Some whisper this is where the first blonde hair originated, a legacy of the king's greed forever woven into his daughter's beauty. He reunited with his people, vowing to use his wealth not for personal gain, but for the best of his kingdom. The tale of King Midas serves as a timeless reminder. While ambition can be a powerful motivator, unchecked greed can lead to devastating consequences. True wealth lies not in the accumulation of material possessions, but in the love, compassion, and connection we share with others. Though forever marked by his folly, King Midas embarked on a new chapter, his heart filled with humility and a newfound appreciation for the simple joys of life. His story, a cautionary tale woven in gold, continues to resonate through the ages, a testament to the enduring power of redemption and the human spirit's ability to learn and grow from its mistakes.